right? So, I mean, let's look at, so again, the piecewise function j of x is basically just saying two or more functions, okay? So let's graph absolute value of x. You guys should know that's the V-shaped graph. Why? Because we spent a whole bunch of time in Algebra 2 talking about it. And it's been posted on the board on that wall, I think, since like the beginning of the year. So you guys should remember absolute value of x. You should also know how to type it into your calculator just to verify. Just, and if you don't, come and save me. But that's the absolute value function. Now, the piecewise function has constraints. It says only, do I want you to, only is this function valid, or only want you to evaluate or graph this function for when x is greater than zero. So here's your x-axis. When is x greater than zero? It's basically any number that's to the right of the y-axis. Would you guys agree with me? So everything over here is not a part of this piecewise function. So we're just going to erase. Then it's x is greater than zero. Is x equal to zero? No. So we're going to have a whole because it's not equal to a zero. Then we go to the next function, x plus 1. Guys, we've been graphing lines in algebra 1, right? We should remember how to graph a line. The y-intercept of this line is 1. Then up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, or down 1 to the left 1. Right? But it says, I only want you to evaluate or graph this function for values of x that are less than zero. So do we need to do anything to the right of the y-axis? No. So let's erase that. And it is equal to zero, so that's going to be a closed dot. So that's what your piecewise function looks like. Okay. Now, as far as our piecewise function, um, now we just now we're going to evaluate our limits. So our limit as zero from the left. So as we're getting close to zero, from the left we're approaching what? One. As we go from zero to the right, we're approaching zero. As we approach zero, from left and the right, it does not exist because it's different numbers. As we approach infinity, so as x goes to infinity, we go to infinity. As we go to negative infinity, f(x) is going to negative infinity. So really, the hard thing is remembering how to do those piecewise functions, right? And if you have a piecewise function, take your graphing calculator and just do the functions in, you know, independently of one another. Okay? Um, all right, guys. That is uh, 